The setting is the USFL Championship in Canton, Ohio. The USFL was revived from the 1980s and made it here. Two teams, the Philadelphia Stars against the Birmingham Stallions. It's the third quarter of the game and the Stars just scored a touchdown, but failed the two-point conversion making the game 20-15 for Birmingham. The Stallions get the ball in attempts to extending their lead, but all would go wrong. After just getting to the Stars territory on the field, Stallions starting quarterback Jamar Smith gets injured on a first down to what would be a leg injury that keeps him out of the game. With this shift, Birmingham's chances for a USFL championship is under the hands of Alex Magoo. One of the many thoughts that could have went through in this moment could have been, how did I get here? How did it end up being me to take this team to the promised land? Today I'll break down what has been the career of Alex Magoo. <laughs> Alex Magoo was born on November 19, 1995 in Tampa, Florida. Right off the bat, Magoo's family was an athletic one. His father was a former NAIA offensive lineman and his mom played Division II volleyball, along with her brother being Kelly Goodburn, who punted for the Chiefs and Redskins, the latter team he won a Super Bowl with. Oh, and his grandmother played college basketball. Safe bet was, Alex was going to want to play sports. By age 7, Alex picked up soccer and baseball until his parents finally let him play football at age 10. Not shockingly, he liked football and committed to the sport into high school, playing for Gaithier High. To say it the least, Magoo didn't put up big numbers in high school, notably only throwing 8 touchdowns as a senior. Colleges weren't looking at Alex, a two-star recruit, as he attended every college camp he can go to, notably receiving interest from Colgate University. It wouldn't be until after attending a college camp ran by FIU head coach Ron Turner that would make the note in Magoo's life. He received an offer to play for the Panthers, a university only four hours from his hometown. Of course, Alex committed. Magoo would join Ron Turner on his second season with FIU, where the Panthers went 1-11 for the 2013 season. For 2014, his freshman season, Magoo's first college snaps would be in the season opener against Bethune-Cookman playing from the second quarter and scoring the only touchdown in the loss. The next week against Wagner University, Alex would be named the starter, with a little bit of a twist. Ron Turner would implement a two-quarterback system, utilizing Magoo and junior EJ Hilliard. The quarterback system would go on until week 5 against UAB, where Alex would play the entire game, going 9 of 24 for 204 yards and two touchdowns to bring a win 34-13. After the success and another win against Florida Atlantic, Alex was selected as one of the 30 freshmen in a watch list for the National Freshman Performer of the Year trophy. Magoo would start every game going forward, with Hilliard still playing some snaps, more or less, but by the end of the season, the job was good as Magoo's. The Golden Panthers would go 4-8, being second last in their division. For his first season, Alex would throw for 1,680 yards with 14 touchdowns to 10 picks. He would earn CUSA All-Freshman Team honors, as well as marking school single season records, most notably first in total touchdowns responsible for with 18. The future was looking bright in 2015. Alex had no competition with Hilliard leaving, even having a compliment piece in John Smith and the running success of Alex Gardner. With all the weight on his shoulders, Magoo improved. He would take FIE 5-7, being a three-way tie for fourth in their division. He would throw 2,722 yards with 21 touchdowns to 8 picks. He would earn CUSA Offensive Player of the Week for his performance against Old Dominion, as well as breaking more single-season records, with passing yards, touchdowns, to offensive yards, and touchdowns responsible, the latter beating his freshman mark. After two years of success for Magoo, he would stumble into his junior year in 2016. To start off, Ron Turner would be fired after losing the first four games of the season. Then the Panthers would go on to go 4-8, continuing the struggles with team success. Alex would also miss some time after suffering a wrist injury. Overall, this would be his worst season in his college career, even failing to break school records like his last two seasons. In nine games, Magoo would throw 1,891 yards with 13 touchdowns to 11 picks. After an embarrassing season, Florida International would bring in Butch Davis, the last coach for North Carolina in 2010, as her new head coach. As well as FIU losing Jonah Smith, as he would go on to be drafted by the Titans, and gaining Alex's brother Shane Magoo, who played offensive lineman and redshirted his freshman year. But even with the big changes, the storm passed for Alex Magoo. 
Alex Magoo and the Panthers would break through finally after years of below average seasons going 8-5 being second behind Florida Atlantic and finally participate in a bowl game after five years of not appearing in one, being the Gasparilla Bowl against Temple which they would lose 3-28. Here, Alex made his best statistical season, completed 65.4 of his passes of 2,798 yards with 17 touchdowns to 8 picks, as well as rushing 231 yards with 5 touchdowns. After seeing his college career, Magoo would finish his career in top 3 in pass completions, passing yards, passing touchdowns, and total offensive yards. Alex would participate in his college pro day, but not get invited to the Combine. Most saw him as a developing backup in the league, working out with the Patriots, Colts, Buccaneers, and the Chiefs to name a few. But ultimately, the media would press Magoo as a late to undrafted pick for the upcoming draft in 2018. Hello? Alex? Yes, sir? Hey, you still get my business card, right? It's John Schneider with the Seahawks. Yes, sir. I got it. All right, man. We'll throw it away, dude. Rip it up. We're taking you right here. Yes, sir. All right. Congratulations, man. Hey, Alex, congratulations. Thanks, Coach. Hey, we're fired up to get this done. Congratulations. You're the first guy we've drafted at the quarterback position in a number of years, so let's make something happen with this, okay? Thanks, Coach. I, I really appreciate it. All right, buddy. Congratulations. It would be on April 28th that Magoo would be drafted by the Seattle Seahawks with their second pick in the seventh round, making Alex the first quarterback the Seahawks drafted since Russell Wilson. Seattle has been successful, making the playoffs since 2012. The Seahawks have just released Trayvon Boykin amid off-field issues and re-signed Austin Davis just before the draft began, meaning Alex had to fight for a roster spot. During the preseason, Magoo would play every game, going in for the first game in the second half, then the fourth quarter for the next two, and finally play the second half in the preseason finale against the Oakland Raiders. Ultimately, Seattle will stick with Davis, who would be placed on IR. Instead of going with Magoo, they would trade for Brett Hudley, along with the 6th round pick. Alex would finish the preseason going 36 of 62, for 416 passing yards and 3 touchdowns to 1 pick, along with running 59 yards. He would resign to the practice squad shortly after. After his practice squad contract expired, Magoo would sign a future reserve contract with the Jaguars in 2019. The Jaguars, coming off a 5-11 season, were making huge changes in the quarterback room. Blake Bortles would be released in March and Cody Kessler in May, leaving Tanner Lee remaining with Magoo. Then Jacksonville would sign Nick Foles after a Super Bowl win with the Eagles and draft Garner Minshew the second in the sixth round of the draft. The backup spot behind Foles was up for grabs. In the first preseason game, Alex would play in the fourth quarter against the Ravens. After the game, Jaguars would release Tanner Lee after a poor performance, working Magoo up the ranks. But even with this, Magoo's playing time would be cut after Jacksonville grew with Minshew. After the preseason, Jaguars would waive Alex after playing three games, recording 11 of 29 for 60 yards for an interception, along with running for two touchdowns. Next day, Magoo would go on to sign with the Texans practice squad, but after week one, the Jaguars would lose Nick Foles for the season after a clavicle injury. Scared of losing Magoo to Jacksonville, the Texans would sign him to the active roster on September 10th. The Jaguars would trade for Joshua Dobbs. After five games inactive, the Texans would wave Magoo back to the practice squad, where he would spend the remainder of the season. He would sign a future reserve contract into 2020. The Texans were coming off a solid season, going 10-6 and losing in the divisional round to the Chiefs. They had a franchise quarterback in Deshaun Watson, and they re-signed their backup in AJ McCarron. Bill O'Brien would push Magoo to bulk up to build their own Taysom Hill for Houston. But like many players this season, the pandemic ultimately cut most chances for Magoo. With no preseason to prove himself worthy for a roster spot, Alex was released from the Texans, but signed back onto the practice squad after week one. But after four games, the Texans would release Alex and Dwayne Harris from the practice squad in order to sign Brent Maher and Emmanuel Ellerby. Aside from the five inactive games, Magoo wouldn't record a stat with Houston. He would be a free agent until December 9th when he signed to the Seahawks practice squad for a second stint. He would go on to sign a future reserve contract with Seattle. Russell Wilson still here with Geno Smith as backup, fighting for a roster spot against Stanley Antling. On March 20th, Alex would go under investigation for alleged assault after sucker punching the victim in the face after assumably making a move on his girlfriend. Nothing would come out of this investigation. Danny Atling would be waived and Sean Mannion would be signed, leaving Magoo with the strong opportunity to be the third stringer on the roster. 
After two games, Seattle would release Magoo. Rumors said that Pete Carroll wanted Magoo so badly that he tried Alex's safety, but ultimately let him go. He would go 15 of 33 for 145 yards with a touchdown to two picks, along with running 42 yards. This would be the first time in his career he would go into the new season as a free agent. Hello everyone, Bo Jackson here. And I'm proud to announce the first round draft pick, quarterback for the Birmingham Stallions, Alex Magoo. It would be a quiet season for Alex until February 22nd, 2022, that would be announced that he was drafted by the recently revived Birmingham Stallions of the USFL. He would be named the starter for the Stallions in the season opener against the New Jersey Generals. But until the second quarter of the game, Magoo would suffer an ankle injury and miss the rest of the game. He would be transferred to the inactive roster and miss the next two games. Jamar Smith would emerge for the Stallions, so when Magoo came back on the roster, he would be playing as the backup. Birmingham would go 9-1, being the first in the South Division. They would as well make it to the championship against the North Division Philadelphia Stars. Now, we're back to the championship, and Magoo and his debut drive would lead to a missed field goal for 38 yards. The next drive, Magoo would throw a tip pass that would be intercepted by the defense. He wasn't thrilled. We're gonna win this thing. We're, we're gonna win this damn game. The Stars would go three and out, giving the Stallions back the ball. This time, Magoo wasn't going to fail. He would lay the offense down the field for a touchdown to Victor Boldy Jr. After another missed kick, the Stallions would have the lead once again, 26-23. With the Stars' attempt to answer the score, on the first play, it would be picked off for pick six, extending the lead 33-23. The Stars would score again and the Stallions would go 3 and out, giving the Stars a chance to try or even take the lead with 45 seconds to go. But on the second play of the drive, KJ Costello would throw another pick. Sealing the win for the Stallions. Magoo with 77 yards, a touchdown and a pick, would keep Birmingham in the game and ultimately help them become USFL champions. Going to the second season, it wasn't made public if some players were coming back. Jamar Smith would be one of the first to announce commitment for season two. But with constant watch over the USFL website, Magoo was still on the roster, non-verbally coming back for the season. For the season opener against the Generals, Jamar Smith would be the starter going in. But when 10 seconds left in the first half, Smith would leave the game, and Magoo would be in. His first play would be a 6-yard touchdown to Jay Sternberger. He would go on to win the game 27-10. After the game, Jamar Smith would be placed on IR after an injury to the left finger, missing the rest of the season. In unfortunate circumstances, Alex Magoo was back as starter for the Stallions. With the season being in his hands, he stepped up in a big way. He would lead the team to 8-2, clinching the South Division once again. He has won three Offensive Player of the Week awards, currently holds the record for passing and total touchdowns in the season, and would also make the All-USFL team and be honored league MVP. With his first run in the playoffs, Magoo would destroy the Breakers 47-22 after having five total touchdowns, bringing them back to the championship against the Pittsburgh Maulers. It would be a slow start, but by the second half, the Stallions would put away the game after a scary fumble return, but they would win against the Maulers 28-12, going back-to-back -back champions. Magoo would throw all four touchdowns in this game and now has two USFL rings to his name. With the season closed, Magoo has proved himself a spot in an NFL roster. Magoo has fought for what he's done. He wasn't successful in high school, but still did everything he can to play in college. His college team's success was minimal, but he's played substantial numbers that got him drafted in the NFL. After years of traveling to NFL team to NFL team, he would make history in the USFL. I cannot wait to see what Magoo does, whether it be here in Birmingham or somewhere with an NFL team. I can't wait to see what he does in the future.